Saturday night on New York's west side, and a typical bunch of New Yorkers are off to the movies. The Fly and Aliens are doing good business, and there's a sneak preview tonight of another strange critter from out of town called Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee is sold out. Paramount Pictures is testing the water, and it feels warm. Crocodile Dundee is sold out. What the Yanks at the sneak preview don't know is that the star is sneaking in too. I'm supposed to be sneaking here. I don't want you to like hanging around. You're going to follow me all the way in, are you? I want to go to the toilet. I got a free ticket for you? I hope so, mate. You have seen it before. Yeah, a couple of times. Well, they're waiting. They're sold out. I know. Of course it is. <laughs> no, no, Americans have got the same good taste we've got. Of course it's sold out. Like the old song says, New York, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. If you've seen the movie, you'll know that when Michael J. Crocodile Dundee checks in here at the New York Plaza, he's a bit puzzled that no one will say g'day when he walks down Fifth Avenue. Well, after this week, Paul Hogan isn't going to have that problem. Paramount Publicity is now trying to launch Crocodile Dundee as a new American cult and to make Paul Hogan the biggest star Australia has ever had. At home they, people say, oh, Australia's the flavour of the month and they, they love Aussie movies. Yeah, in the yeah, art cinemas they do. Aussie movies go on in about ten theatres across the country and later people watch them in the middle of the night on television. But you stick up this as an Australian movie and think that's going to attract people, boy, you're wrong. That's going to keep them away in their millions. They think it's, it's just like Swedish films were popular, you know, as art films, say in Sydney. You know, yeah, they're on at the Dendy Art Cinema. And that's a little bit how they view Aussie movies. You've got to sort of say to them, no, 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 this is just a movie. It's got Australians in it, you know, but it's not an Australian movie. Otherwise, it does end up in the Dendy Art Cinema. You know, and the critics sort of heap praise on it, and the people stay away in their millions. He is uh, thought of as being one of the most charming, charismatic, colorful, funny uh, international stars ever to come down the pike. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Excitement himself, Paul Hogan. Good night, Paul. These last few weeks have been a long, hard haul. The Paramount publicity machine has had Hogue's crisscrossing America doing show after show. Good day, Paul. G'day, John. Do I say that right? <laughs> Do I say that right? Hoags has had to kid his way through about 400 interviews like this in less than a month. You have everybody putting a shrimp on the barbie. We are told that in Australia they're prawns you put on the barbie. Yeah, I had to translate it for you. That's been too successful, actually. We've got to do another campaign now to stop Americans coming from down to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> How many times can you tell your life story and keep smiling? You had no background in show business whatsoever. Show business was not uh, in the cards for you. What were you doing before that? You, you... Used to. I was, a, I was a rigger. And you turned it all around yourself. I went on a talent quest straight off the Harbour Bridge as a rigger. And uh... I hope you're not pushing it too hard. Yeah, I'm pushing it hard, but to travel first class in limousines and stay in the best hotels and travel around America in a month is a prize they give away on radio shows, you know. <laughs> so it sort of... I couldn't go back to the the boys on the on the railway laying lines will go back onto the bridge and say, oh, guess what I've got to do, fellas? You know, I've got to traipse around America, you know, do all these talk shows. And they wouldn't be, feel very sorry for me. Hoags and Mick Dundee look quite indestructible up there on the screen, but was it a bit of a scare to find out that Paul Hogan isn't? Yeah, it was a shock. I thought, it's a mistake. You know, I'm like Popeye you know, or Buffhead in the cartoons. Um, those kind of people don't get sick. I've never been sick in my life. What we all want to know is, how are you feeling now? Oh, I'm terrific. I'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping. But as far as that, that cerebral hemorrhage thing goes, that um, uh, would have killed a normal man, but uh, now that's gone. The medical advice I got from that was, was like being hit by lightning. Pretend it never happened and get on with your life. Um, so I don't know what it was. It's a terrible mistake. <laughs> it's not a hereditary thing that's going to leap out of the closet again. No, no. they say that they can't really tell me why it won't recur because they've never done any autopsies. And that's good news. So in other words, it doesn't happen to people the second time and kill them. You had the whole country worried, you know. It was very nice of the whole country to worry. <laughs> I got 
like uh, cards, letters, flowers, fruit, presents from people like I was an elder statesman. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a hard load to care. It was a bit embarrassing. <laughs> um, and sympathy and, and things like that are very uncomfortable things to wear. It's been a heavy year, and playing promoter on this marathon schedule has been tough enough. But Hoag's has also had a few language problems over here with the Yanks. Isn't that terrible? No one speaks like that. If you had scrubbers on one hand, you'd have... Oh, an ace bird's top drawer. An ace bird's? Ace. Ice bird's? Ace. As in cards. Oh. Ace of spades. Oh, ace, ace. birds. An ace bird is top drawer stuff. Top drawer and a yeah. scrubber is like a deuce. Scrubber is, um, well, it might be a bit of fun, but... Now, what do the women of Australia call men, in all fairness? Oh, pains in the, um... Mick Dundee would probably go all right in Hollywood, but how do you go in Hollywood? Do you like that crowd? I don't know. It's, it's sort of like, uh, you get this picture, of people say that's the Hollywood scene. It's sort of like the show business scene at home. Uh, people think that you all sort of knock around together and, you know, Kamal and Bert Newton and, and Don Lane and Ray Martin all turn up at the same cocktail parties. Well, if there's a big show business circuit at home, they're keeping it from me because I haven't found it. And I think Hollywood's probably the same. But yeah, everyone goes to Hollywood because that's, that's where the movies are made. I know the, the art films come out of other places, but the movies that go on and, and sort of work all around the world come out of Hollywood. It's where all the best scripts end up and the, and the best people. I passed Cary Grant at the airport and I wondered what Hoag's was going to be like when he's in his 80s. Well, he talks funny like I do, like they think I do, so I don't know. Once you go into the entertainment business, you're a public servant. And the viewers decide whether you keep going or not. I'm, I'm in the position I want to be in. If the viewers get bored with me, I can say, well, I'm bored with you too. Uh, I don't have to grovel uh, and just retire. I just um, do whatever I want to do. I've prepared for you a terrific little demonstration film here, which will show you what could happen if the government takes over running cabs. Well, I said you better start her up, son. You're the mechanic. No, I can't start her up. It's not my job. I'm the driver. A bit of hard work doesn't scare me, mate. That's the boy. Yes, it's 13 years since Hoag's climbed down off the harbour bridge and climbed up the showbiz ladder. You get the feeling he's given a lot more than he's taken. You two men, stand fast now. Don't you salute in your armour? Not a lot. Well, we used to, but we're trying to give it up. He's made a lot of people happy. And with Hoag's all the way was his mate Strop, the no-hoper who could never win a heart, not even a booby prize. I oh, know this, mate. The old gag, right? You stir it up, you tip it down the sink, and you won't have a block drain for six months, right? <laughs> no, mate. No. You drink it. Real. But Strop, alias John Cornell, husband of Delvine Delaney, is now a multi-million dollar success story as producer of Crocodile Dundee. Are you going to walk away with uh, a very nice slice of the pie this time? Yeah, we will. Oh, that's only fair. You know, we made the pie. Um, I, I reckon it can go close to 100 million Australian dollars anyway, as far as the gross is concerned. Big bickies. Big bickies. Isn't it fun talking in hundreds of millions, mate? I love it. Will you cut a harder deal the second time around? Oh, sure. Yeah, we've got a leg this time. We'll have an arm next time as well. Paramount people said, you know, these are the tough guys. These are the super cynics, you know. They do, and they sit there and they sort of go, come on, make me laugh. And they did. They laughed like drains. Two networks here have uh, wanted to talk about making a series, television series of Crocodile Dundee. So, they, you know, before the movies even really hit, they seem to think they could spin a series off it. I don't want to anyway. At home, the expectations for the film are very high, aren't they? Maybe too high. Yeah, they're too high, yeah. If it's sort of, if you don't knock off E.T. and The Godfather put together, then you've sort of failed almost. We won't know for a couple of weeks just how well Mick Dundee and the Yanks are getting along. It won't be for one of trying on Paul Hogan's part. He's given it everything and Paramount has spent nearly $8 million Australian on promoting the film. But as Sam Goldwyn or someone said, if the people don't want to go, you can't stop them. So what do those New Yorkers think? 
It was great. We just saw him inside. It was, it was really, really, it was good. really good. Really good. Was it funny? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. Really good scene. Really good dry sense of humor. It was really good. I thought it was a fantastic piece of work. Uh, the, the whole story was really magnificent. Ridiculous. A lot of fun. Well, he's cute and he's charming and you... I don't know. <laughs> Aha. We have a new sex symbol, do we? He's very sexy. Yeah? Of course. I think he's sexy. That's why I came tonight. And it looks like there's one bit of Crocodile Dundee the whole of America's going to be in love with. You got a light, buddy? Yeah, sure, kid. There you go. And your wallet. Nick, give him your wallet. What for? He's got a knife. <laughs> That's not a knife. That's a knife. When, he, when he's about to get mugged, all right, and he says, no, that's a knife. And that he pulls scary. out his big machete and he starts waving it around at the guy. Every, I think everybody in the picture wanted to deal with the mugger the same way. Like a comic book superhero. I loved it. I loved it. What Hoax calls just a simple little comedy looks like it can make America laugh too. Stay tuned for the sequel. You're a wonderful clown. But behind that smiling face, are there some sad nights? No, not really. No, no I, a, the way my life went to turn, to get down off the Harbour Bridge and walk into television and every, everything turned to gold from then on. If you weren't happy about that, then the, the giant hand should come down out of the sky and smack you over the face and say, well, what do you want? You know, no, everything's roses. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.